All right, guys, we are about to start the NFL 2019 season. Always an exciting day. And I know a lot of you are involved in these survivor or knockout type pools. And if you're not and unfamiliar with them, it's pretty basic. What you're going to do is try to pick one team a week without the point spread. And if that team wins, you advance. And you can only pick that team one time. There's variations of these type of pools. Sometimes you have to pick multiple games uh, depending on how many people are left in the pool. But essentially, you're picking one team and they must win their game outright without the point spread in order to advance. The last person standing is the survivor and wins the pot. So I see a lot of mistakes in these type of pools. And, you, and while they're very difficult to win, there are some ways you can give yourself an advantage. Now, to show you just how difficult it is to win, look at some of the numbers. If you took a seven-point favorite every week, the seven-point favorite wins their game approximately 75% of the time. In order to win two seven point in order for two seven point favorites to win in a row so in other words in week one and then week two that would be about 56 percent of the time so you're almost at a coin flip just to get past week two picking two teams that are touchdown favorites to get all the way through to week 10 which in most pools you're going to have to at least do depending on the size you're down to like a five percent five and a half percent chance if you were able to pick a seven point favorite and in, in all likelihood you're not going to always find a seven-point favorite to take. So if you did, you'd only have a 5% chance of just surviving, and that would be not even winning the pool. And quite frankly, if that were the case, where those seven-point-plus favorites were winning every single week, you probably wouldn't be the only one who was taking them. So um, extremely difficult to win. Always temper your expectations. But what we can do is increase the probability. So if we're one out of 100... We have a 1% chance of if we are just an average player, um, we could probably increase that to a 2 or 3% chance. It doesn't sound like a lot, but it gives us a gives us a much better positive EV and becomes a game that we want to play, but we need to play optimally. First things first, you need to understand the rules of your particular survivor pool. So read all the rules before you enter. Understand how much you have to pay to get in. And what I always suggest is somewhere between 2 and 5% of the entries, uh, total entries should be yours. So if there's 100 people in the pool, you're going to want to have two or three, up to maybe five entries to try and win this. Obviously, what this does is increase your chances. The more entries, the, the better chance you have. Now, there's a lot of different ways to play it, but there are some wrong ways. One of the most incredibly wrong ways is don't ever play an underdog. I have seen this multiple times, and yes, on occasion, people will win, and they picked an underdog somewhere along the way. Do not ever pick an underdog unless it's absolutely necessary. You get down to week 15, 16, and you just have no other options is a possibility, and you have to try and take a shot at an underdog. Other than that, do not take an underdog. And this goes to... Don't try to be smarter than the market, okay? The market is the smartest way and the best predictor of games uh, out there. There's a thing called Wisdom of the Crowds, and if you haven't read that book, um, I highly suggest doing so. But the, the betting market is as efficient a market as there is in the world. So we know pretty accurately how often 7-point favorites win, 10-point favorites win. And don't be confused by the fact that, well, how accurate could it be if 7-point favorites win 75% of the time? If they're a 7-point favorite, they should win all the time. No, it's accurate to the point of they have a 75% chance of winning. That is how, that is the accuracy. No one ever has a 100% chance of winning, no matter how big of the, the spread. Anything could possibly happen, right? There are absolutely no locks. But historically... We've been able to figure out, and the market has, listen, three-point favorites, four-point favorites are going to win at this percentage of the time. So use the market to your advantage. Use the point spread. Don't don't look at a point spread and say, well, I like that seven-point game better than I like that ten-point game. Um, no, the ten-point team is going to win more often than the seven-point team. Don't try to outthink it. Also, big misnomer, home teams are better than road teams. Do not bother looking at home and road. It means absolutely nothing. As a matter of fact, seven-point favorites um, on the road have been minusculely 
better than uh, the seven point favorites at home. It's 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 in it's it's not really of any consequence. The differential is small and it's it has absolutely uh, no bearing on anything. But the point of it is that I see a lot of people don't want to take a road team because they think there's some sort of advantage. It's baked into the number already. That seven point favorite at home and that seven point favorite on the road are a seven point favorite. So don't get caught up in that. Divisional games. A lot of people don't like to take divisional games. Well, these, these teams know each other. These are big myths. Um, again, I've looked at the numbers. There is absolutely no advantage or disadvantage in divisional games. Again, the only thing that matters is point spread. So pay attention to the point spread, point spread only, and don't worry about this team is coming off a buy and this team is, unless you have some solid data to back up the reason you think a seven point favorite is better than uh, one seven point favorite is better than another, possibly you have a model. Outside of that, don't fall into these traps and myths that a lot of people have been uh, perpetuating over the years in these pools. They do not have any weight and no bearing at all. So get rid of those thoughts from your head. Now, how do we play this from a game theory standpoint? Well, if we have one entry out of 20, we're going to play this a little differently than one entry out of 100 or one entry out of 1,000. Why? Because one, out of, one entry out of 20, again, we have a 5% chance with absolutely no edge. Let the other people, and there will be some of those 20 who are going to play this a little unorthodox. They're going to take some teams that they shouldn't take. Let them take the risk when it's 20 people, and you whittle, whittle, your, whittle your way down to hopefully advancing to week seven, eight, nine, and ten, and we can get the pool down to a number where you're either, you know, in a two or three way race, and maybe you can make a deal, or potentially win. So you're going to want to play it pretty straight um, when you are in a small pool. When you are in a larger pool, you need to take more risks. Again, by risk, I don't mean taking underdogs, two point favorites when it's unnecessary. What you want to do is look for, hey, who's that seven point favorite? that nobody else is taking. If you look at this week, uh, Dallas is a seven, seven and a half point favorite, and Philly, nine, nine and a half, Seattle, nine and a half. Those two teams, Philly and Seattle, are being taken 20, 27 and a half percent. And again, I'm getting this data from Survivor Grid, and you can get the link down below, but if you use that website, it's really uh, a valuable tool to use when you're playing in these pools because I want to know, well, where is everyone on? What, what does everyone have? Who's everyone taking? And you'll see that, yes, Seattle and Philly are both more likely to win than Dallas, but it's not that big a difference in their win probability based on the line. And if you look on Survivor Grid, they'll give you the win percentage right there. So as of right now, Philly's about a 79% chance to win. Seattle has a 78% chance to win. And Dallas is about 75%. Yet Dallas is only getting 6% of all picks. So right away, I understand why Miami, Dallas has Miami coming up in three weeks at home. That's a game that a lot of people are going to want to take. But what you're going to do by taking Dallas with your one pick is be a little contra uh, contrarian without going crazy. And now it also gives you the ability to be playing a different road. You're taking a different path than the rest of the pool. So while you'll have Dallas, let's say if everyone wins and all the favorites win, um, you're going to have a different route. Come week three, if we get there, okay, you won't be able to take Miami or you won't be able to take Dallas against Miami, which may be the best play, and that's where everyone else is going to go but there'll be other games on there you're going to take. And again, you have to be willing to you have to be willing to take a chance of losing and losing early in order to win. Right? You must take risk in order to get the reward. If you don't take any risks here, the chances of you winning are extremely extremely low or lower than they would normally be. So, we want to find that edge. So in this case, you know, Dallas or the New Orleans game, which is not being taken um, at a high rate. Those two games are the games I'd be looking at. If you're playing a lot of entries, five entries, 10 entries, 20 entries, you're going to want to start to put this on a market basis. You're going to want to look at, you're going to take a diverse amount of teams. So then you're going to want to take a lot of these big favorites. But how much of each favorite are you going to take? So I would compare it to the survivor grid. If I had 
10 entries I'd be wanting to look at. Maybe I need to be at the market. I would need to have two Phillies and three Seattles. Do I want to be below the market? Yeah, maybe I want to be below the market, but I want to sort of have a, have a little bit of a hedge. So if I want to be under the market on Philly with 10 entries, maybe I only put one. And I want to be under the market on Seattle, maybe I put two. And then I take where I'm saving against the market, I need to be over the market on some other teams. So maybe Dallas, Dallas is where normally I'd only have one entry with the market. I'm going to put two entries or three entries on Dallas. Uh, same things with New Orleans, right? Baltimore, you're going to have about one entry here. Maybe I don't put any Baltimore. Or maybe I want to be overweight Baltimore. You need to, you need to choose that. But what the key is here is you don't want to take the path that everybody else is taking. So I'm going to hopefully update um, and I'll do some blogs, maybe not videos uh, per se. If you um, follow the website, I'll do some blogs on who I like in uh, these survivor picks. And if you hit me up on Twitter, always happy to give you some advice on those. But understand the game theory behind it and how you're going to play this differently depending on how many entries you have and how many entries are in the pool. So good luck with your survivor pool. Good luck tonight on game one and the rest of the NFL season.